what is a function? So in the most abstract term, we say that function is something that takes some input, processes it, and gives output. Like you can uh, visualize this to be a kind of machine that takes term, some input and gives some output. Now, uh, the most common examples we take is just like a food processor could be a juicer. When you put some apple, you'll get an apple juice. If you put some uh, oranges, you'll get an orange juice. So this is what the processing part called the function. Now, whatever we feed inside, say it's an apple, then it is called input. And whatever it comes out, said to be an output. So the most usual way of deducting a function is fx, but we use other terms also. The other variables that we use is say hx could be gx, rx, etc. Now, let's say if I define a function, I define a function say fx as say x squared when x if if x is say an odd. And see if I write x plus 7, if x is even. Now let's say if I place x here and fx here. So what do we get on placing x as, say, 1? As you know, the definition of the function, x is an odd here. And in case of odd, the definition of function is x squared. That means Replacing x is with 1, we are going to get this as 1 squared, which is 1. Similarly, if I plug in x as 2, I should use this definition of x as clearly x is a 2 is an even. So we are going to get this as 2 plus 7, that is 9. So if I place x as 1, we are getting x squared fx as 1. If I place x as 2, we are getting fx as 9. If I place x as 5, 5 being an odd number, so I should use this definition and 5 squared is 25. Now this is something that we have done in uh, lower classes, in class 8 and 9 also. So you must, uh, can. Uh, it's easy to recall if I replace this fx with y, you'll say something that we have done in class 8, where I used to make a table, and we have x as the input and by using that say y is equal to say x plus 7 like that we used to place x as 1 we used to get x plus 1 plus 7 something like say 7 plus 1 that is 8 right so you should remember that we can write this we can replace this fx as y and we can also write this, say, for example, y is equal to x squared in this case, and y is equal to x plus 7 in this case. Now the question arises, what is, understand, uh, figure out which of the following ordered pair that's given here are functions. Now the first definition, as you can see that uh, each element right, say here the domain has only one and one image, like one has image as one, two has image as 11, three has image as one, and four has image as 15. So you can figure out that every element of the set set X as an ordered pair in this, the F1 I'm talking about here has no two ordered pair have the same first component Right, so we'll say that, yeah, it is a function. Now, what about the second one? The next part, that is the F2. Let's see if, if it is a function or not. So for that, what I'm going to check, that here the one is related with one only, two is related with seven, and three is related with five. So this also qualifies to be called as a function. Now, as we go to the third part, let's see the third part. We can see that here, 
the first element one is related with five, two is related with nine, and two is also related with 11, right? This disqualified to be called as a function. So as you know that uh, every ordered pair in set X has an ordered pair in the F3. However, there are two ordered pair that is 2, 9 and 2, 11 have the same first element. So we'll say that this is not a function. So what do we know that for a relation to be called a function, we need to observe that the set A or set X, whatever it is, has one and only one image in set B. Then only we say that such a relation is a function. So the next terms that we'll be familiar with will be domain, range, and codomain. So domain is the set of first elements, right? The set of first elements, they form the domain. Like we know that for F1, the set of first elements is one, two, three, and four. So we'll say that domain, which is a nothing but a set here, and that is one, two, three, and four. This is domain. And what is range? And the range should be the set of image or the second element of this function. So clear date is one, 11, one again and 15. So we'll see the range here is one, right? This is one, 11 and 15. And what is codomain? The codomain here is the whole set B or Y, the second set so formed is called the ray codomain. So you can see that the codomain here is one, five, nine, 11, 15 and 16. So you can also figure out that range is always a subset of codomain, right? As you can see the elements 1, 3, 1, 11 and 15 is present over here. So we'll say that range is a subset of codomain. So look into this example. Here I have uh, taken a function fx such that the definition of the function is fx is equal to 2x squared minus 1. And these are going to be our input, that is the domain. So first of all, we need to make an arrow diagram to indicate this. Now for that, what I'm going to take, let's say, before we make an arrow diagram, let's figure out what are the inputs and outputs. So clearly when I replace uh, X here with minus two, what we'll get here? We'll get F minus two as two, two square, that's minus two square, minus one. Now you can see that what I just did, I replaced everywhere in the function x as minus two. So what we are getting here is we are getting that is two and two square is four minus one. So it's four into two, eight, eight minus one, seven. Now for the next input is minus one. So minus one, if I replace here with minus one, what do we get? Minus one square is one, one into two is two, two minus one is one, so that is one. For f0, replacing x with 0, this will be 0, 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Then we have f1, now replacing x with 1 here, this 1 square is 1, 1 into 2 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. With for f2, finally, it is 2 square, which is 4, 4 into 2 is 8, 8 minus 1 is 7. Now, in order to make an arrow diagram, let's say our inputs is going to occupy the first set. Let's say if I place these values on the first set, I'm calling this as A and this being B. Now, the inputs were 
minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. And the outputs, as you can see, we have outputs as 7, 1, minus 1, 1 again, and 7. You shouldn't write it twice. So it's minus 1, 1, and 7. So if I have to represent using arrow diagram, it should be 2. This is, as you can see, when the input is 2, output is 7. So 2 minus, sorry, input is minus 2, output is 7. When our input is minus 1, output is 1. So minus 1 is related with 1, right? When the domain here is minus 1, its output is 1. Now, if I take 0, on replacing x with 0, we got minus 1. And likewise, on putting x as 1, we got y as 1 only. And finally, replacing x with 2, y7. So we did the arrow diagram part. Now, we have to write this function in the roster form also. So if I write its roster form, let's write its roster form. So in the roster form, we can say that this function f, this function f in the roster form, say, can write f is equal to, that is, we can see that starting with minus one, right? So minus uh, two, we can start with this is minus two is related with seven. So this is minus two, seven, right? Then it is minus one, one, zero minus one, and one, one, and finally it is two, seven. So this is the rooster form of writing this uh, function. Now comes next the domain, as I said in the beginning, that the domain are the all those elements of the first set which have some relation with that of the second. Now clearly the domain here, let's say if I write domain, so the domain is going to be set of elements in the first, which is, uh, that's minus two, minus one, zero, and two. So it's minus two, and there was one as well, I missed one. So the set of elements, in the first set will be called as the domain and the range, so what a range is here, the range of the set of second set, I mean elements present in the second set. So that's minus one, one, and seven. That's going to be the range in this case. Now, if there is a function, say fx, whose defined definition is this, right? This is fx is three x minus two when x is less than zero. It is equal to one when x is equal to zero. You can see it can be independent of the variable also. And when it is greater than zero, it is 4x plus one. Now we have to find out f1, f minus one, f0, and f2. So how should we get it? And here the relation, the function is from R to R. That means here the domain as well as codomain are real numbers. So what we'll get if I re replace x with one, clearly one is greater than zero. So we should use this definition of the function and I should say it is four times one plus one. So this is four plus one, that is five. Now for the next f minus one, right? I took this as minus one. Now you see here minus one, as you know, it is less than zero. I should use this definition of the function, which is three times minus one minus two. So it is minus three minus two, which is minus five. To get f0, clearly it is f for x is equal to 0. We have fx as 1. As I said, it can be independent of the variable. It's a constant here. Now, finally, to get f2, 
right? Two, which is greater than zero, we should replace x here with two. So this is four times two plus one, and that is equal to nine. So we can say that, that f zero, f sorry, f one is five, F minus one is minus five, F zero is one and F two is nine. So we can even figure out what is the domain and range clearly. The domain here, domain, you should know that it is all those values of X for which all those input, right? And the range in particular range. Okay, let me write down the domain as well domain are the set of these values taken as an input which is minus one i started with one so it's one minus one zero and two but the order of occurrence does not make a difference you can flip the order for getting the range what we got as an output that is five minus five one and nine but when i ask you about the codomain you should know this is the whole set B. As you know here, the function is defined from R to R, where R stands for the all real number. We'll say that codomain belongs to R, that is set of real numbers. To reinforce the concept of range, I have taken three functions. Let's say I did, I told you in the beginning that we can, generally we use fx, but we can use gx hx particularly we use the different symbols like gx hx when we already have fx in one particular question now as you can see that uh, we have taken three function where it is defined from r to r that means the domain is uh, here uh, all set of values as input is real number and so codomain here is R. Now the first function we have to find the range. As you know that uh, it is like if I place uh, in this function, let me write down the function. What in case if I place f as minus five, I'll get it is minus five whole square as 25. As you know that whatever may be the input here, whether it's a negative, positive, fraction, decimal, your output is going to be either zero or any positive numbers. As you know, the square of a number can never be negative. So what's going to be your range in that case? Let's say what is going to be the range in that case. So we'll say that the range here is all set of non-negative real numbers. So the range in the first case, in the first case, we'll say that is a set of all non-negative. Well, non-negative includes zero, right? So do not write positive because as we get to know that, it, when, when the input is zero, the output is zero. So it includes zero. So it should be written as all non-negative real numbers. numbers. Coming to the next part, that is GX. Here, GX is sine X. As you know that uh, uh, whatever be the values you uh, place in sine, like over X here, right? The domain can, it can take all real numbers, but you know that the range that is the minimum and the maximum values between which it lies. So you can say that the minimum value of sine is minus one and the maximum is one. Since it includes minus one and one, I should say that the range in the second case is equal to minus one to one. You may write in other way also. The other way you can write is uh, the range as y greater than or equal to minus one and less than or equal to one. That's the another way of writing. Now coming to the last part. Yeah, the definition of the function is hx, which is x squared plus one. Now check here. The lowest value, uh, first of all, you should figure out this one. This is the lowest value that it can take is zero, right? It is x squared, which is zero here. Now, and 
highest value that x square can come is infinity. What I mean to say once again, as we have written over here that for a square of a number is all non-negative real numbers. So it can vary from. So I, if I ask about uh, simply about ignoring this one, you may say that it is from zero, including zero to positive infinity. But then I can see it is not x squared, it is x squared plus one. So I must modify it and write it from minus one inclusive to positive infinity. Or the other way you represent, or you may write this as, as y such that y is greater than equal to one. So this is how we can find out the range in this case. So we can do more uh, questions based on this in the next video.